So wait there, guys. So I've been feeling terrible lately. I just have been kind of sick. Um, been having a headache. But anyway, uh, that's not what this video is about. This video is about this Dell. Uh, I picked this up, this Dell, for uh, eight bucks at our local thrift store, Desiree Industries. Uh, it is an absolute mess, and it is so dirty that I didn't even want to work on this thing in the house until I can get it clean. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off this uh, workbench that we got here, and I'm going to just see if I can get it hooked up to the old CRT that we got there, and just see if it boots. So you can see this desk area is just this workbench is just a total mess of computer parts. Like we've got just a random IBM ThinkPad right there and I could never get to post. Um, I tried to get it to post, I even spent a, some money on a uh, power charger for it and it just didn't work. Paid five bucks for it. Uh, that was a bit depressing. This monitor though I have history with. Uh, this was this is the monitor that I first used from 2005, the day I got it with my first computer, till late 2011 when I moved on to the G4. And I even used it with the G4 for a bit there. Uh, but it's just been sitting out here since CRTs are just so outdated. And this is a later CRT, so they just didn't give a crap when they built this thing. Like, this was such a low-end seller on when I got it. Uh, not, not the monitor, but the tower when I got my uh, computer. It was a, such a low-end seller on. If I ever pick up a computer that's similar, I'll definitely make a video about it. But anyway, I just need to clean off this stupid uh, workbench and pretty much just shove everything under there. There's the MDD. Uh, it's been stripped of all of its parts right down to the casing. So, yeah. Hardly ever get to film outside anymore. I uh, just, my videos have pretty much just changed. Uh, it used to be when we were doing the golf carts, I was uh, outside quite a lot, uh, but not really anymore. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug it in and we'll just see if it blows up. I think it's a weird thing about these Dells is they always seem to have the... I, get, I wouldn't. I would call it faulty, uh, but a lot of people wouldn't. Uh, it should maybe where they seem to just like to boot up the second you plug them in. Um, so far, nothing's come on screen. Give me a couple errors. Just is there a restart button? I think that is a restart button. I may just have to open it up to begin with. Um, it's connected. Uh, I'm not sure what to say. I'm probably just going to put it out here on the porch and we'll open it up. I was unaware that the tripod was not tightened and was slowly just careening down till you guys were just sort of looking at the floor. That is the level of professionalism we are dealing with here, folks. So it's obvious that there was a spider at some point living in the heat sink of this Dell. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't really phase me, but it does kind of give you an idea of what we're really dealing with here in terms of, you know, people just don't really take care of their stuff, but um, it's probably going to need a new power supply. At the worst come to worst, I got 512 megs of RAM out of the deal, and I also got, that. that is a 1 gigahertz uh, Pentium 3 in there, and that could those parts could easily go into uh, considered the same socket. There was only one socket Pentium 3 uh, that was made. There was only one socket for it and they both used the interchangeable socket so I could just as easily take out the CPU and just do an upgrade to the other Pentium 3. So that is why this video is called Pentium 3 Adventures. I believe this is part 4 because uh, this you know it involves Pentium 3's so that is why it's part four. Anyway, I am going to be just updating you guys. There's going to be a complete and total teardown right down to the bare of the case and I'm getting the motherboard, all the PCI sockets out of it, removing the motherboard, and I may actually be washing it in the dishwasher. So, yeah. So I successfully removed all the PCI cards. Uh, these are all OEM to Dell, so I'm assuming that this thing has not really been opened. Uh, at least not recently, so... Yeah, that also explains why there was a black widow living in the thing. 
Uh, but that's why we're tearing this thing completely down and we're going to be uh, hopefully getting this thing built back up. Okay, so everything down to the MOBO is now out except for the floppy drive and the disk drive. But I'm going to leave those in for now. Uh, there's also a weird connector that I'm going to be showing you guys later that if somebody could tell me what it is, I'm probably going to figure it out by the end of the video, but that it's odd to say the least. So here we've got the motherboard. Um, this is the weird connector I was talking about earlier. Um, I forget exactly where it is. I think it's next to the CPU. Uh, it's that connector right there. This connector. That that very, very odd connector right there. Uh, it's only found on this power supply. And this power supply, it feels so cheap. And then you've got the heat sink. Um, that's on the 1 gigahertz Pentium 3. And the AGP slot, the P PCI slot, and everything. I don't think that this is standard ATX. Um, it's, I think it's made to be on a Dell machine. It's one screw to remove the entire MOBO, so I guess that could be quite convenient, but um, I'd like to do some bench testing on this thing and just see if I can get it to post. Alright, so I've kind of got my um, ghetto test bench here. I got the motherboard hooked up here. Uh, I'm probably going to not use the 450 watt power supply. Um, so I'm just going to take out the 450 watt power supply and just see if I can cut across the camera here guys and uh, take this super dirty dingy 200 watt Dell power supply. So what I read up on these is that you have to use their 200 watt power supply with this motherboard which I think is just, even today, it's just it really shouldn't fly because this is the excuse for power that they were using for the CPU. They don't use the standard uh, four pin that we use today, or eight pin in some uh, certain configurations. No, they decided that they were going to make it so that you could not upgrade the power supply in this thing. But they made apparently they made a decently solid power supply. At least they didn't go with Beztech. I would not. I always say that I would not touch Beztech power supplies with a 10-foot pole, because there is a, probably a good chance that if you were to touch a Beztech power supply with a 10-foot pole, that it will send electricity through said 10-foot pole and could probably kill you. Life lesson there, kids. Okay, guys. So got the entire thing taken apart. This is take two, actually. You guys, I cut that part out to where I did not have the thing to properly turn it on. We're going to just see, hit the power button, and see if it'll post outside the computer, if anything. Yes, it posts. Um, NVIDIA, yeah. Uh, so, the reason it was not putting anything on the screen uh, could have either been the fact I replaced the PRAM battery. I, I still say PRAM from the PowerPC days. The CMOS battery, and I replaced the GPU. So now I've just got to clean out the case and we're going to be working on this for the rest of the night so it posts just fine. So uh, yeah. Alright guys, so things going to be mint by the time I'm done with it. These stickers are actually pretty resilient. Um, just been sort of washing it in the sink. Any other plastic parts I'm going to remove and then the metal bit I am actually in the process of blowing out with the uh, with the vacuum cleaner here. Sorry about the lighting, it's actually nighttime outside, but I'm gonna be blowing out this computer and uh, pretty much gonna be making this thing mint because it actually booted straight up into Windows XP. So, uh, yeah. Hey guys, so I'm out in the garage right now, um, but we've got the front panel of the dimension. Uh, everything was pretty much washed, hand washed in the sink and there we've got the uh, drive cage where the first hard drive sits and now everything seems to be pretty dry now uh, to the touch. Sure some of it is going to need to be finished washed and then in here I've got the main uh, part of the computer drying. Um, I just sort of washed the entire thing and I actually got a manufacturing date on the computer. Uh, let me just focus. 5.15.01. So, yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty nifty uh, little uh, cleanup of this thing. Okay guys, so the motherboard lined up with the uh, tray. Just fine. Everything got back inside. Everything is looking good. Uh, looking sharp. 
Um, everything, I genuinely, I genuinely, can't say general, generally cleaned it. Um, yeah, I've been sick lately. <laughs> You can't you tell, but anyway, I gave everything a general clean. New thermal paste, um, just some random thermal paste that uh, I've just had kicking around. Um, this is the cheap stuff, but it'll do for this processor. And there we are with the AGP slot and the RAM. This thing is going to be a really fast computer for uh, even Battlefield 2 will run like a beast on this thing. PCI cards uh, fit in there just fine. Uh, should be. Uh, with this with this is a one gigahertz CPU. I confirmed it, and with the 512 megs of RAM and this awesome FX 5500, uh, I'm actually going to be getting a Voodoo card for that Pentium 2. Um, I'm going to be ordering some stuff for that uh, sound card and a Voodoo Voodoo 5, I think it's called. But it's the one that has dual GPUs on it, so that one is going to be coming later. Uh, but right here in Pentium 3 Adventures Part 4, I am. Uh, assembling this computer. Um, I've pretty much deemed the graphics card that came with it dead. And so now I'm just going to be putting the thing back together and we'll update you guys when it is set up. Okay guys, so if, uh, if everything went proper, when I press this button or this button, it turns on and everything seems to work fine. It posts and it should boot up into Windows XP. I'll update you guys when we're at the desktop. That hard drive does not sound healthy at all. Listen to that thing. It's like a it's a Maxter drive and Maxter's not exactly the greatest hard drive. Man, this thing is riddled with viruses. It is slow. Now, normally I would go on a rant about how these people probably did leave all their stuff on here. They probably did. Well, it'll take like forever. This drive may even be dying uh, or partitioned into like 75 one gig partitions. Um, but I'm just waiting for it to uh, come up with the recycle bin. Man, this thing is slow. Why did they even have to put XP? This thing is either the fastest Windows 2000 computer you will ever find or the slowest piece of crap Windows XP machine. But, anyway, I think it's just now getting caught up on my commands, and it should open up the recycle bin, where I'm willing to bet it's probably all their stuff that they dragged to the recycle bin. Uh, it probably didn't work, and they probably didn't have even a chance. And it's loading up. I'm guessing it's going to be full of personal documents, folders, and everything. The, com the camera's battery is about to die, uh, but... This is not at all the end of the video. There's probably still like 20 minutes left. Uh, but yeah, it's taken so long to load up. And uh, yeah, it's probably just the fact that this is such a crap installation of Windows XP. Windows XP is just too heavy for five. There we are. Personal photographs of family members and everything. All just dragged straight to the recycle bin. These people, I swear to God. Idiots. So right guys, so it is the next day, this is day two of the Dell project, and I, it still posts inside of its uh, thing. I wiped the hard drive because I, I dug deeper into there, and they're just, uh, it, it was just people's stuff. It wasn't typically messed up, but it was just people's stuff, and it was running Windows XP, which I say is a disgusting operating system to run on this. Here's something also odd. Windows XP saw this as a 1 GHz CPU, yet this sees it as an 866. Um, could be the fact that the jumpers are overclocked, because I know that Dell offered a 1 GHz variant, and what I'm thinking is maybe they just uh, they shipped with the same CPU, but they just overclocked it a bit. And maybe that's what Dell was trying to do back in the day because I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. Let's just say that. So the plan for today is going to be to take these CDs, this massive pile of CDs from the Dollar Tree. They're actually stopping stocking these, so I just got a bunch. But these are CDRs, and I no longer have a CD drive in my main machine, so I am going to have to 
either burn them on the, the Toshibe. Let me just see if I can focus. Either on the Toshibe laptop or on my mother's Pen EMD, which I'm probably going to end up doing there. So uh, just give me a second. All right, guys, I'm going to leave this burning, and then I'm off to the gym. And no, this is not that computer running Windows 7. This is that laptop that I was given a while back ago. Um, it's a dual-core Pentium that I, I was going to Hackintosh, uh, but I was very unsuccessful in doing that. So now it was running Vista, and Vista just kept blue screening. So I put uh, Windows 7 on the thing, and I'm probably going to get try to get Vista on the thing again because I don't like running trial operating systems, and this is not licensed. So it's burning, and I'm just going to get my shoes on and head to the gym, so I'll be back in about an hour. All right, guys, I'm back from the gym, and I'm installing a proper operating system. I hate it how people thought that they could put Windows XP onto computers that were just too slow. And it's the same thing now with Windows Vista and 7. Not so much with Vista. Uh, it seems to me when I do see Vista, it's either running on a workstation with DDR2 RAM and like an old Xenon or the, that's pretty much the main configuration I see Vista running on or actually on uh, just workstations that have been on 24-7 and the owners just really couldn't care uh, about you know because if, if it works don't fix it and uh, anyway I've just sort of went on a rant I'm not exactly sure where I'm going here but the point is I've seen Windows 7 be put onto a Celeron with 256 megs of RAM, don't do it. It, it is downright awful. Put Linux on it. Uh, I, I I despise Windows XP. Really, it, it's solid, but it's just a pretty disgusting operating system, if you ask ask me. But anyway, setups, loading files. I am going to be checking out the uh, Rust server that I'm an administrator on. I'm just gonna pop my head in there while this is installing. Uh, if you want, you can friend me on Steam. There's going to be a link down to my Steam account in the description below. Uh, right now on the Rust server, we've actually got a special going for the first 100 people to uh, join. You guys get, uh, pretty much we'll hook you up with uh, guns, ammo, and a nice house. So, yeah, you can uh, friend me on Steam with a link down in the description below. So, yeah, I was just playing some Rust on my uh, main rig. And here we've got this. This is Windows 2000 running on this thing. Uh, it's running absolutely fine. Um, so far, no issues. Hasn't blue screen of death at all. Um, I'm just going to be installing the drivers and everything, and then we're going to be hooking it up to the network, seeing how well she fares on the internet, and then installing 007 Nightfire onto the thing. So, uh, more updates later. Here's a fun little fact for you uh, nerds and nerdettes out there. I believe that these ports on the back of here may be um, 2.0 ports because when I plug in a USB drive, like this is a USB 2 flash drive, it acknowledges it and reads it just fine, unlike that computer and uh, the other computer which is under the desk. So I think these might be 2.0 ports, either that or because it's using the NT kernel, uh, Windows 2000 uses the NT kernel it could also be a reason but the point is I don't need all the CDs that I need uh, so this should be pretty fun alright so the graphics drivers installed hundred percent fine on this Dell um, we're now running this display at 1280 by 1024 resolution uh, which is pretty massive and this thing has got some serious power behind it so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install these sound card drivers and get the thing hooked up to a speaker system and then we're gonna see how well that works alright guys that's pretty much it for this video I'm calling it a night it's like eleven o'clock I'll be I'll be lucky if I get this thing edited before tomorrow morning uh... so I guess anything that's left for footage will be carried over into uh... into part five uh... I was going to install some more games on here nineteen forty two is currently working on it uh... it runs absolutely fine max settings at eight hundred by six hundred and I get no frame drops, full 60 FPS. This thing is an absolute beast for a Pentium 3. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, and until then, kick it.